training. I'm passionate about helping people find the joy in their own training, feeling empowered versus just fixating on the end results without really caring about the process and also not finding the joy and empowerment in their training. Mm. So I've, I've been, I've been thinking about and talking about this a lot recently about, you know, people go for the end goal and the, the, the big dopamine hit when you get the end goal and everything, and then you go, okay, what next? But it's getting the dopamine hit from the, from the session, from the, from the process that, yeah. That is what I think you're trying to say. That is just like, yeah, just enjoy the process. If you can enjoy the process, you're going to get the goal, no problem. And um, also people are so, sorry, I interrupted you. That's people fine. are so obsessed with the end result that they don't enjoy the process. But also me, I'll use myself in, as an example. When I was learning muscle ups, I could not do them. And then of course you think end goal, muscle up. I can't do it. Therefore my training is useless. And I wasn't enjoying myself, or at least I was, maybe I was enjoying myself, but I was getting very frustrated. Yeah. So rather than thinking about getting that muscle up, I was focusing on the steps to getting that muscle up. Each time I trained, I was focusing on mastering certain steps and trying to get a little better each time. That way I was enjoying the process. I was getting a lot farther and I was feeling a lot more empowered. My, as I was working with a coach at the time when I first decided I wanted to learn muscle ups and he would even tell me all the time how tough I was being on myself because <laughs> athletes get this and it can even apply to non-athletic endeavors like life regular life stuff if you don't achieve what you want to achieve right away you might be really tough on yourself and I was being unreasonably tough on myself and he kind of told me to lighten up that made a difference too Mm. What I'm going to do, I haven't brought this out for a while, but this is what we call the acronym hammer, which I usually, if a guest uses an acronym, I'll usually hold this up and we'll talk about the acronym. And I'm just okay. aware that many of our listeners possibly won't know what a muscle up is. And before we go too deep into, into that, can you just explain, Megan, what, what a muscle up is just for, for the people who are listening who might not know? So... Probably the best way to describe it is you do a pull up, but rather than stopping when your collarbone, some people just get their chin to the bar, rather than stopping when the collarbone or chin is at bar level, you're going to carry over the bar into a press. So it almost combines a high pull up with a tricep press. Mm. And then on the way down, it's the reverse. You do the dip and then you lower. So you uh, end up at the top of the bar, you're, 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 you're well above the bar, kind of your hips are in line with the bar and then your arms are locked out and your body is totally above the bar. Yeah. At the top. Yeah. 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 I, like, I like what Megan said there about pull-ups. Like when you get it to your collarbone or sometimes your neck, there'll be a lot of people who are listening like at eye level, they get it to that. And, be like, and, then, <laughs> and then you like try and get your chin yeah. over the wall. That's a pull-up. <laughs> and then the muscle up. Goes. I tell people to keep their chin down. A lot of people, they, yeah. they, they just, they, it's like a chin, uh, literally a chin up. Yeah. Instead of actually pulling up, they just stick their chin up and reach up with their chin. Yeah. And they forget to complete the movement with the arms and the shoulder blades. So they're not using as much back. Hmm. So and in terms of your training, Megan, you, you, you had a, you had a competitive soccer background for, for 27 years, I think you said. Yeah. Um, and at what stage did you, how old were you when you kind of decided to, to either engage in more strength training or were you strength training throughout your sort of soccer career as well? And then yeah. when did you, if you did transition from more of a conventional, traditional strength training using a lot of exterior load and barbells or kettlebells or dumbbells or whatever, more into this kind of calisthenics and, and body weight focus? So I started strength training about at about age 16. I probably did not start strength training well until about age 30. I'm 42 now. So I probably started strength training well when I was just over 30. Hmm. I, and so with my own training, even now, I don't just do body weight stuff. I share more of the body weight stuff, but I do a lot of stuff, dumbbells. When I'm at the gym, I will use obviously barbell, trap bar. So I have more of a hybrid approach to my training. It's not just calisthenics, like just body weight stuff. Hmm. And good, my entire life, I've been doing this kind of this hybrid approach to training. 
but now the like the, or the body weight stuff I'm doing now is far more advanced. It's interesting because we had um, a lady on called Kelly Manzoni from she's from America as well. I, I'm terrible Minis- with was she in Minnesota? Minnesota, mate. Yes, yeah. Minnesota, and she does a lot of like Indian clubs and mace and um, more of the kind of circular strength stuff. And if you looked at her Instagram, that's predominantly what she has but when we actually spoke to her she said oh I also do when I go to the gym two or three times a week I do still do compound lifts and 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 other strength stuff and like you say from your it's it's interesting to speak to you because like you say if someone was just looking at your at your Instagram because it's the stuff that you share more they might think oh well Megan just does all of that but you also have more of a kind of um conventional sort of strength training side as well when you go to the gym but you just don't share that yeah I haven't been since the pandemic started I actually have not been in a gym since since March of 2020 I built a really really good home gym not really intentionally it just kind of kept growing every week so I have pretty heavy dumbbells I have 50 pound dumbbells I have a lot of other equipment where I can do Nordic curls hip thrusts Um, you've seen my parallel bars. I have, I have a lot of different equipment. So I do plan on going back to the gym at some point, but just with everything I have at my house, my training, I have actually gotten a lot stronger in the past two years without touching a barbell or the trap bar. Mm -hmm. So I am excited to get back to doing some of those exercises because I think I'm going to be, I've really prioritized the unilateral training with my lower body. And I can do now, no problem, single leg deadlifts with 100 pounds, higher rep, negative tempo, perfect control, skater squats, super heavy. So I think once I go back to the heavier lifting with the barbell and the trap bar, it's going to be pretty interesting to see what happens. Yeah. And I think that, so, so when did you, I know obviously the things that's probably most like, like you say, things on Instagram, you, they go on Instagram, they're very impressive to look at and they're very impressive when you actually know what's going on as well. But a lot of the training I'd imagine that you do, um, we, we talk about it when we had Dan John and things on here before, that the majority of training that builds up to get you to that is far more kind of rudimentary and, and kind of punching the clock and, and basic. And then it's the, spl- it's the flashy stuff that everyone rem- recognizes and remembers and is blown away by it's kind of all the foundations that you build before you get to the flashy stuff. I talk about, yes, with my own training, with my clients training, most of what we do and most of what I do is so fundamental. Hmm. And then because I, I now own the fundamentals and I'm working on the, the fundamentals every single day that has allowed me to do the more advanced stuff. Hmm. And I consider the advanced stuff as just additional layers to the fundamental training. Hmm. And most of the innovative stuff I do, it makes sense. I'm not just being, if something is innovative, it's not being innovative just for the sake of it. There's a rhyme and a reason, and it's usually just adding a slight layer to something more fundamental. Yeah. It's funny because um, you get you get this sort of thing, don't you? Because, I mean, I know what James is saying about, I mean, I've, I follow you on Instagram as well. Yeah. And it's great watching you do the muscle-ups with the plates, um, on your legs and all that sort of stuff, which is just ridiculous. Um, <laughs> but um, a lot of the stu- a lot of the stuff I like is like do this instead of sit ups, do this instead of sit ups. There's a lot of that um, because like people get stuck, don't they? And like, oh, I'll just do a lot of sit ups, and they don't get anything from it. And the other, the, you know, they're not they're not really thinking about the progressions that they could do with it and everything like that. And it's usually because of the one or six pack or something like that. And it's like, well. That does that doesn't even work anyway. But the exactly. the whole thing of the whole thing of do this and it, it actually involves your whole body and then involves kind of like the cross crawl patterns and and all of that sort of stuff, the cross body patterns and what have you. So it's it's really interesting to see that. And then like you say, you get the the like you say the cool stuff or the circus skills, which they basically are, aren't they? Like you know, it's it's kind of that comes from all those fundamentals that get you there. And people want to just be able to do that thing straight away, don't they? Without all the stuff beforehand. 